Hey, what's up guys? It's Nick White and I do tech and coding stuff on Twitch and YouTube and I do and check the description for everything else. Um, I do all of the Leco problems. I got a ton of them up on my YouTube channel, so please go check those out if you want these explained to you. I'm trying to get a job at Google, guys, so this is the path to do it, Leak code. Um, this problem is called maximum width of a binary tree. So given a binary tree, write a function to get the maximum width of a given tree. The width of a tree is the maximum width among all levels. Uh, so the binary tree has the same structure as a full binary tree, but some nodes are null. The width of one level is defined as the length between the end nodes, the leftmost and rightmost nodes, uh, null nodes and level where null nodes between the end nodes are also counted in the length calculation. So the, there's a way to do this that's pretty cool. Uh, I didn't think of it intuitively, but the solution explained it to me and I like it a lot. Um, we're going to traverse the nodes and we're going to, okay, so wait, let me explain this a little bit better. Null nodes are counted um, as well. So see the, the, the width, the max width of this tree is eight because you can imagine there's null nodes here between six and seven. So we would have one here, um, you'd have one here, and then if these had children too, you'd have one here and you'd have one here. And it counts like that. So, but down here, it wouldn't count. It's only between the leftmost bottom node and the rightmost bottom node. So the leftmost bottom node here would be, um, or just the leftmost node and the rightmost node. The leftmost node here would be five and the rightmost node would be three. So that's just two is the width because it's one, two. Um, so what we're gonna wanna do, and then here it's two because three, two. Um, it's not just the bottom level, it's any level, it's just the max width throughout it. So what we're gonna do is we're going to assign position values to every node. So don't worry about the values of any of the nodes for this entire problem, we're just gonna assign position values. And in a binary tree, to have these ordered, we're gonna have the leftmost node. This is something you learn in data structures in college. The left node will be, the position value will be the value, so we would start, the root would be one, right? the left would be two, and then the right would be three. So the left is always going to be the value of the root node times two, and the right is gonna be the value of the root node times two plus one. So we're gonna have this, we're gonna have a max, we're gonna have a position value for each node, and then what we're gonna do at, is we're going to have a hash map that contains, this hash map is only going to contain, we're gonna keep track of the depth at each level, so we're gonna keep track of the level, um, and we're gonna keep track of the position. We're gonna have a hash map that contains only the leftmost nodes of each level. So we'll just do this and it'll make more sense as we go. So max width is gonna be, we'll just initial it, uh, initialize a max, max width variable, and then we'll have a hash map that's gonna contain the depth um, and position. Uh, so we'll call it leftmost positions. Uh, it's only going to be for the leftmost nodes as we go down this tree. So um, max width we will set to zero at the beginning because that's just a good default. Um, and then uh, we'll also initialize our leftmost positions hash map to an empty hash map. And then we'll have this helper method called get widths, right? So get widths, we're going to pass in our root uh, zero and zero and then we'll return max width at the end. Um, so max width is gonna be updated within this void get width, uh, get width, let's say, get width um, method. And um, we're gonna take in tree node root, we're gonna take in int depth, and we're gonna take in int position. So the initial position that we're using is zero and the initial depth is zero because that's the root node, that's very initial thing. So if root is equal to null, we will return. Um, otherwise, what we're gonna wanna do is we're going to add to our leftmost positions hash map. And this will make sense in a minute, guys. Just give me a second. Uh, compute if absent. So this is how we're going to add nodes only for the leftmost nodes into our hash map is this compute if absent method. So we're gonna add the depth, the current depth into it. Um, and we're also going to add the position. And the compute if absent only puts the value into the hash map at, so we're putting it in at the current depth. So at each depth as we go, so at depth zero, we're gonna put 
the leftmost node here, which would just be the root. And then here, if there's no value for that depth already, so there wouldn't be whenever it's the leftmost node, um, we're going to put in um, the leftmost position. So once, since we're doing recursing on the left side first, and we will be recursing on the left side first in a second, let me just actually write these recursive calls. We're always doing recursive calls here, guys. Um, root dot left, so we recurse on the root left and right. That's how you just traverse a tree regularly. Um, with depth plus one, each time we're gonna be doing depth plus one, and on the left nodes, we're gonna be doing position times two, like I said earlier, to get the va new value of our position. Um, and recursing on the right side as well, depth plus one. Each time we have a go to a child node and position times two plus one for the right node, which will give us the actual perfect sorted positions. Um, yeah, so if there's, since we're going recursing on the left side first, left nodes are getting visited first. And there's gonna be, when we get to a new depth each recursive call, there's gonna be no value in the hash map yet. So this essentially could put a right node into it if it saw a right node first, but it won't because we're going on the left nodes first. So we go on our left node first. There's no value whenever we recursively call on a new depth. There is gonna be no value there. So the only time this compute absent so we're gonna put the leftmost, the leftmost node into the hash map, but when we see a right node later, it would call this compute if absent on that depth, but it would already have that leftmost node in there, so nothing would happen to that hash map. So that's why it only puts the leftmost nodes. This little arrow function is actually a lambda function, and all it does is x is arbitrary, and it's basically just putting depth and then position in. You can ignore these basically. It's just putting depth and then position. It's basically just x is an arbitrary variable that gets set to position and then x gets put into the hash map. So this is just putting the depth and position of all leftmost nodes in. And then all we have to do is update our max width variable now, which is going to be set to math.max between max width and the position minus leftmost positions dot get depth plus one. Now here's where I have to explain the whole problem and we'll run this and I'll show you that it works. And it works perfectly. So what this does is we have our hash map of leftmost depths and positions. So for example, you can imagine that this would be, um, this would be this tree, if it had the correct positions la labeled, it would be one, two, and then three would be over here, so it would be four, five. Now, you want, you would have four and five here at the last level. Now, five minus four is one, but that, that's wrong. We want two, the length of two, we want the width of two because there's two nodes. So basically we have to add one to no matter what it would be. The positions, the subtracting the left, we're grabbing the leftmost position and we're grabbing the rightmost position because this is going to go down every right node. The leftmost will be grabbed, so we this is gonna be the leftmost node for sure. And then every other node in that current level, we are going to test this exact statement on. We're gonna test the max width against every right node. So it might test it on you know, not the rightmost node at first, but when we get to the rightmost node, the max width will be greater anyway. So we're gonna be re-updating the max width each time. Hopefully this is making sense, but it's kind of hard to explain this one. This one's pretty hard to explain. When we're, so every, every node we traverse in every level, we're, test, we're re updating the max width if it's bigger. So we test our max width against the max width, and we do the current position of the current node we're traversing, subtract it, subtracting the leftmost position, and we have to add one no matter what. So we have that rightmost position, and subtracting the leftmost position is going to give us exactly the width, it's gonna give us the exact width and minus one that we need. So all we have to do is add one to that width. And that is because of the way that the positions are set up where all the leftmost nodes are, the value is position times two when we um, set them at the beginning in position times two plus one to get to the right node. It's just organizing in an ordered way our tree so that when we do this math at the end, 
the positions are set up perfectly so that the subtraction is going to give us the width perfectly. Hopefully that makes sense for you guys. I know it's kind of tough to visualize. I wish I could give you a diagram here. There's not really a diagram that I can show you here, but I think it's a really good and intuitive solution. Just imagine a tree. If you could take a pencil and pen and draw the exact positions, like it would be, it would look like one, two, three, four, five. Now, if it was one, if the tree was one, two, three, four, five, you could, the max width is going to be two, no matter what, because two and three are two and four and five are two. And if you subtract three minus two, that's going to be one, but we need two as the max width. So we just add one. Every time it's going to work out perfectly. You just have to add one. You do the subtraction from the rightmost node and the leftmost node. So two and three would be rightmost minus leftmost. Three minus two plus one gives us two, or it would be four and five. 5 minus 4 plus 1 gives us 2. So those are just some examples. If you do a couple examples of this tree, you'll just notice that the rightmost position minus the leftmost position plus 1 will give us the max width every single time. You just have to be sure, this is something you learn in data structures in school, that you, when you're setting the positions for these nodes and doing these recursive calls, the left, mo the left nodes get the position times 2 as the new position, and the position times 2 plus 1 is for the right node. And then you just think about the depth by one each time. You have this leftmost hash map, which I explained earlier. The compute, if absent, just puts it in there if it's at not there yet at that current depth. So the only nodes getting put in that leftmost position are the leftmost position nodes because we're recursing on the left side first. And I'm really trying to explain this well. So let me know if I did a good job at that. Um, it's pretty intuitive. We're updating these. Uh, up here, we set them up here so that we can update them down here and we just return the max width at the end because it's getting updated throughout the whole thing. So let me know what you guys think about that explanation. It was a really hard one to explain for me here um, without visualizations. Um, maybe I'll try and incorporate those a little more next time. But I do all the problems, so check those out on my channel. And thank you guys for watching and uh, good luck.